Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a mono green Titan ramp deck featuring Towering Titan, the 6 mana mythic rare giant from Jumpstart that enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, where X is the total toughness of other creatures we control, and we can also sacrifice a creature with Defender at any point to give all creatures trample until end of turn. So the game plan of the deck is very simple, try and add as much toughness to the board as possible while ramping into a Towering Titan, which can potentially even attack in the same turn we play it if we have a Crashing Drawbridge in play, which can give our creatures haste until end of turn. So the game plan is very linear, if our opponent knows what we're trying to do they can probably find a way to stop it, especially if they're packing some instant speed removal, but we're trying to catch our opponents off guard and kill them in one big attack. So let's take a look at our entire deck list, starting out with a bit of mana ramp with our 1 mana Lenor Elves. We also have the full playset of Portcullis Vine, which is a 1 mana 03 plant wall defender, and for 2 mana we can tap it and sacrifice a creature with defender to draw a card. This can function as a card draw engine and also just a cheap way to add 3 toughness to the board. And then we've got our full playset of Cerulee Caretaker, a 1 mana 03 Dryad with Defender, and we can tap it alongside another untapped creature we control and add 1 mana of any color to our mana pool, so we can tap it alongside a non-mana producing creature to still generate additional mana, while again adding 3 toughness to the board for just 1 mana. Then at 2 mana we've got our full playset of Overgrown Battlement, this is by far the most powerful way of generating mana in this deck, as a 2 mana 04 wall with Defender that can tap to add green to our mana pool for each creature with Defender we control, so that can very easily get out of hand as most of the creatures in this deck have Defender. And then we've got our full playset of Wall of Blossoms, a 2 mana 04 Defender that when it enters a battlefield draws a card, so perfect for helping us add more toughness to the board while drawing us towards the Towering Titan and other various combo pieces. And then we've got our full playset of Crashing Drawbridge, a 2 mana 04 wall with Defender that we can tap to give all our creatures haste until end of turn. So this is also critical for winning the game in the same turn where we play the Towering Titan without giving the opponent a chance to use Sorcery Speed Removal to take it out. And then at 3 mana we've got our full playset of Carven Caryatid, very similar to the Wall of Blossoms, just a nice defender that adds a ton of toughness to the board while drawing a card when entering the battlefield. And then 3 copies of Growing Rites of Itlumok, which is a legendary enchantment. When it enters the battlefield we can look at the top 4 cards of our library and we can reveal a creature card from among them and put it into our hand. And at the beginning of our end step, if we control 4 or more creatures, we can transform the Growing Rites into Cradle of the Sun, which taps to add green to our mana pool for each creature we control. So this is also a way to generate a ton of extra mana, while potentially helping us find our Towering Titan. And our other card draw engine in the deck is 4 copies of Beast Whisper, a 4 mana 2-3 elf druid that says whenever we cast a creature spell draw a card, so even if our creature spell gets countered we'll still get to draw a card. And this is another way for us to assemble all the different combo pieces, get enough toughness in play by finding more defenders, and finding all these mana engines like battlements and growing rights, and then eventually finding the towering titan hopefully alongside a crashing drawbridge so we can win the game right away. And then of course our four copies of Towering Titan, being able to give a trample is very important so the opponent can shumblock their way out of it. And it's not out of the ordinary to play a 2020 Towering Titan on turn 4 in this deck, especially if we have a turn 2 Overgrown Battlement which can generate a ton of extra mana. And then the mana base contains four copies of Castle Garenbrig, another way of generating one additional mana when it comes to casting creature spells, which is basically the entirety of our deck. And then 17 basic forests, giving us 21 lands total, which is plenty when we consider all the extra mana creatures we have in the deck as well. And then you might be wondering why we're not playing Assault Formation in this deck. I can already hear all those keyboards typing in the comment section. And of course Assault Formation would make sense as an alternate win condition to turn our defenders into attackers, but it would slow down the game plan of powering out a big towering titan, which is the goal of this deck. But if you feel like it you could add a few copies of Assault Formation to diversify your win conditions, especially if people start catching on to the strategy. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. We've got a decent hand, so we're just missing a better mana engine. Don't have an Overgrown Battlement, Lanner Elves, or uh, not even the Caretaker to help us ramp. So it's gonna be a pretty slow hand, but it will be 
pretty powerful and consistent with all these card draw walls, at least. Well, there's a battlement, so scratch that. If the battlement survives, we're in excellent shape. We might be facing some sort of Kiln Fiends deck that also plays Burning Prophets. Not too many burn spells that take out the battlements. So that should be relatively safe here. A Rimrock Knights pumps the Prophets. And I'll take five. And a Skirt of Critics takes out Vine. Fair enough. Drawing a land is nice. So I can go Wall of Blossoms plus Vine into Carbon Caryatids. Alright, so next turn I should easily be able to play Towering Titan, which presumably is not that easy for the opponent to deal with. Crash through, pumps the Prophet once again. At 15 I can still safely take it without having to risk any of my defenders, which are quite valuable. So we're at 12. Another Skewer the Critics takes out Vine. Sure. I can play Carbon Caryatid, this taps for 4. And then I can sink that into Castle, which plays Titan, I think that's fine. Drawbridge, hmm. Do we want to go for the one-hit KO? Let's go for the one-hit KO. The correct play would just be to play Titan here, but playing the drawbridge first is way more fun. So we'll play the Wall of Blossoms. And the drawbridge. And prepare ourselves for a very powerful Towering Titan. And even if my battlement dies now, I can still play Titan. Uh-oh. They're gonna take out my drawbridge, that's no fun. Double shock to take it out. Alright, at least I can block the Prophet, so that's not going anywhere. I tried. But, uh... Maybe your opponent knows what's incoming. Can even play the Elf first. Alright, 23-23, that'll have to do. And there's a kill Fiend at long last, but our opponent's empty-handed, and uh, they're gonna have to chum block. Can I attack with my Lenor Elves? Yeah, I guess I can, because the uh, Rimrock Knight can block, so they have to double block Towering Titan with kill Fiend and Prophet. Because I can give a Trample. Yeah, that's not going to work out. Alright, sweet. It wasn't with haste, but nonetheless, a 23-23 Towering Titan, after losing a few walls along the way, isn't too bad. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and we've got a solid hand. We're maybe a bit light on card draw engines, since we might not be able to find Towering Titan right away. But we definitely have a powerful start of turn 1 Elf, turn 2 Drawbridge plus Caretaker. And then we'll have a lot of mana to spend on Caryatid and any other walls we might find along the way. And we're up against Goblins, we did draw Overgrown Battlement, which is nice. So that'll give us an even more explosive start. Now we just need to find our Towering Titan. If we can find the Towering Titan within our next two draw steps, 
will have a very good chance this game, although Jump Palm killing my elf does slow things down a little bit. Let's play the battlements, and then next turn can maybe go Carbon Carried plus Drawbridge. Or I suppose Drawbridge, Caretaker into Carried makes more sense. And then I just need our Towering Titan. Finding a Beast Whisper to draw some more cards would also be good. Finding a Growing Rights can also improve my chances of finding the Titan. It's going to be a Goblin Matron for now. Let's see what it searches up. It's going to be Goblin Warchief, so they must already have a Krenko or Moxus in hand. Alright. So I think we stick to the plan. Drawbridge plus Caretaker, and now this can tap for three, which is enough for Caryatids. Vine can also help us draw towards our Titan, although it is pretty slow at doing so, and we will have to sacrifice a bit of toughness in the process. They could technically play a Krenko here, they do not. Well, I can empty my hand, that much is clear. And I guess I can even give the Vine haste with the drawbridge, so I can sacrifice one of my creatures right away, so that's kind of neat. So I guess I'll play out some more defenders. Tap the battlements, which can now tap the castle. Give haste. And then let's sacrifice one of the caretakers. Draw another castle, play elf and pass. And then we still have our carbon carried as a blocker. But yeah, if we don't find our titan soon, we're just gonna die to a Muxus or a Krenko. And there's Muxus. And our opponent did not miss, they found a Krenko right away with haste, so I'm assuming we're dead here. Yeah, we had a reasonable start, but sometimes if the Titan's not in the top 15 cards, it's pretty difficult to win. Gempalm takes out Carbon Carried. And this will be more than enough to take us out. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand's not amazing, but probably still keepable. Just gotta hope to find something to bridge the gap between the Wall of Blossoms and Towering Titan. It's gonna be an untapped Blood Crypt, so maybe a Rakdos Sacrifice deck, although typically don't see Stonequill in those decks. I'm actually gonna play the Caretaker turn 1, and then turn 2 I can play Wall of Blossoms into Lanner Elves, just because it's a little bit more difficult for the opponent to kill Caretaker than it is a Lanner Elves. Turn to Emery, alright. So some sort of Grixis Underworld Breach deck it looks like, with Lurus. So a variant of the uh, Jeskai decks that we've seen before. Alright, the Growing Rites, also a useful way of ramping, although that will require an extra creature. So if I can find a one or two mana creature with it, we're in great shape. Emery can get back Stone Cold Serpent or Tormod Scripts. And a Wishclaw Talisman. Nice tutor effect to maybe help them find the Underworld Breach. Don't care too much about the Tormod Script in terms of Graveyard Hate. Wall of Blossoms, nice pickup. So I can play the Growing Rites and then still play Wall of Blossoms afterwards. And that will help me transform the Rites. And 
what do I take? I could take the drawbridge actually and then play drawbridge this turn. And then next turn we can play the Titan. Alright. So turn three flipped cradle. And next turn we can essentially empty our hands. So my opponent pretty much has to kill me this turn, which they may or may not be capable of. They can activate that talisman. If their turn starts by getting back Stone Coil, I've got high hopes. Second Wish Claw. So I guess they can get a couple Mox Ambers with those. But no, opponent passes the turn. Can I play double Towering Titan this turn? That's what we want to achieve. So this is 2 mana, 6, 7, 8, 9 mana, 10 mana. So I think I'm going to be one short either way of playing double Titan here. If I tap this for 4, yeah, I'm not going to get there. But I guess one hasty Towering Titan still decent. And we might draw into something with Wall of Blossoms. Just the forests. So if I tap this... 7, 8, 9, 10. So I guess I might as well play the Growing Rites first. And then I guess I'll take the Carbon Carry Tits. Play Towering Titan and give it haste. Opponent can chump. Don't know if giving Towering Titan Trample makes a difference here, but I guess I might as well. So opponent needs to combo off this turn, but with double Wishclaw Talisman, those odds are pretty high, I would say, as they can pretty much get whatever they want. Mana might be their only concern. And yeah, turn 4, 16, 16 Towering Titan, still not bad. And the second Towering Titan, as you can imagine, is going to be quite a bit larger than the first, as it also counts the power and toughness of the first Towering Titan in play. Although, never mind, our opponent concedes, so they must not have had all the combo pieces they needed. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Lures of the Dream Dance, so likely the Spirit Dancer deck, which is a pretty bad matchup, unless we've got a perfect draw. And is this a perfect draw? Pretty far from it. No battlement for a lot of mana, no towering titan in hand yet. I mean, it's definitely a keepable hand, but it's just not gonna cut it if my opponent has a turn to Spirit Dancer. So I think I gotta take a mulligan. Alright, this hand has a bit more potential with the battlement in it. I probably have to keep growing right to give me a chance of finding titan, so Carbon Caryatid can go. Turn one selfless savior. Yeah, on the draw, if they have a turn two spirit dancer, it's gonna be close to impossible. Yep. At least there's not that many lifelink enchantments, but if they can give it vigilance, they'll also have a very high toughness blocker, which can block my titan. Uh, suppose I could play the drawbridge and next turn give battlement hastes. Sure. Because then I can play both battlements, give them both haste, and then make even more mana. So we'll pass. Opponent 
opponent is on the blue-white version, giving Spirit Dancer flying, so no blocking allowed. And Sentinel's eyes, yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Now they have Vigilance, so they can also block. And they might have a bigger Spirit Dancer than I have a Towering Titan. And I guess I'm just gonna be dead next turn. But we get to make the cool play of playing two battlements and giving them haste, so... Who's the real winner here? It's still my opponent, but... So turn three... I get to make six mana with my battlements. And transform a growing rights, which would have found a towering titan too. Oh man. So close. So next turn... I would have had near infinite mana and a 13-13 uh, Towering Titan at the very least. Sadly, the Spirit Dancer just a little bit too powerful here. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play and we've got a bit of a sketchy hand. A one lander with Lunar Elves. And no other mana accelerants. Hmm. I mean, if this hand draws two lands in the next two draw steps, or an overgrown battlement, then it's quite good, I would say above average. If it doesn't, then there is a fail rate, but I think I'm gonna risk it. Even the caretaker would be fine, so... Between lands, caretakers, and battlements, we do have quite a few outs. Found a growing rights, so I think going double vine makes more sense. That way if I draw lands, I'm closer to playing the growing rights and transforming it. Golden X, or point maybe on a Doom Foretold style of deck. Still no lands. So I can sacrifice a vine to try and draw one, but that seems kind of bad. So I'll play drawbridge, and then if I draw land next turn, I can play the rights and transform it. Power stone shard, all right, bones ramping. All right, I'll take a battlement. And then I can give battlement hastes and play growing rights. And find an elf that'll play right away. I don't think I need to search for another card draw engine when we have everything we need in hand. Of course, if my opponent plays a sweeper here, I might regret not taking the Beast Whisper, but we've got other problems than uh, not having a Beast Whisper in play, if that's the case. Mystic Forge, all right. That's fine. All right, so now sequencing. Step one, play Carven Caryatid. And then tap this. Play Wall of Blossoms. Caryatid. And that leaves enough mana for Towering Titan which will gain hastes and a 30-30 Towering Titan to win the game. Beautiful. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing Lurus again. So another Spirit Dancer deck, but this time we've got a better draw and we're on the play, so I'll try it. Haven't seen much of our Beast Whisper in action yet. So this might be its time to shine. Turn two battlement, turn three Beast Whisper. Or I can play Drawbridge first, but I want to get to Beast Whisper in play as soon as possible, so I'll still play battlement on turn two. And there's a turn two Spirit Dancer. All right, let us play.
play Beast Whisper into Caretaker. I could play Drawbridge into Beast Whisper and then have a Drawbridge in play, which is a pretty big game. Maybe that's actually better. Nah, I think I still prioritize drawing as many cards for now and then let the Battlements be my mana engine, which should suffice. Alright, so next turn we can play a couple drawbridges and then hopefully find a Towering Titan for the following turn. Second Spirit Dancer, so opponent going for maximum card draw. In this situation, I don't think I mind as much. What I mind is my opponent going all in on one Spirit Dancer and killing me before I can find a Titan. Opponent gets in for three. Alright, so sequencing starts with Wall of Blossoms. Then I can play a drawbridge and then tap my battlement for a lot of mana. I guess I can keep the wall untapped. I'm not going to be using vine here anyway. Taps for five, so I can go Beast Whisper into another Caretaker. Or I can play Growing Rights, so I have infinite mana next turn. Yeah, I like the idea of infinite mana. Ooh, wow, a brick. That doesn't happen very often in this deck. That's painful. But at least we got rid of four lands. Look at the bright side. Hadn't played land yet, even. So I guess I'll play a drawbridge here then. Alright, I mean next turn with the other Beast Whisper and all the mana we have we should easily be able to find a Towering Titan. And I don't think I'm taking 17 here, although it's not impossible. Especially if they start with an all that glitters. Arcane Flights. Okay. Twelve power. Selfless Savior for Indestructible. Okay. Well, I'm gonna need to make a very large Towering Titan this turn, that much is clear. So, before tapping Cradle, play Beast Whisper. Then we'll tap Cradle. There's Towering Titan number one. Maybe I can find a second one. That would definitely make things easier. Play Castle, tap that. Yeah, I should still be able to play multiple Towering Titans with the mana from Battlements, especially if I draw more Battlements. Which we can also give haste. Alright, our deck is going off as they say. Oh yes. Gotta be careful that I don't deck myself. So let's give haste. Play Towering Titan. I wanna see how big this Towering Titan is gonna be. Oh, can we play Triple Titan? I think we can. And they're gonna get bigger and bigger. Oh. 
Ho ho, yes. I think we've got lethal here. I'll attack once this resolves. Don't want to miss out on the opportunity to attack with triple titan. Even though I could potentially find a fourth. Give those all haste. They all trample. Well, we found a way to beat the Spirit Dancer deck with a turn 2 Spirit Dancer. Being on the play definitely helps. Is my opponent gonna attempt to block? They are not. Appreciate that. Alright, well, that was the perfect ending for this video. So if you made it all the way, this is your reward. And yeah, towering titan ramp, a lot of fun, a different take on the defender archetype other than just turning them into attackers. And it can lead to turns like those where you can play multiple copies of Overgrown Battlement, give them haste, make a ton of mana. And uh, we saw Beast Whisper in action in that game, so that's why it's in the deck, so we can set up turns like those. Another card we could consider in the deck is Finale of Devastation to search up our Towering Titan. The only problem is it's going to cost 8 mana to get Titan, and we can't even use our Castle Garenbrick to pay for it since it's not a creature. So if we don't have an Overgrown Battlement or a Transformed Cradle in play, it's going to be next to impossible to cast. So that's why I'm shying away from including it, but you could potentially run it as a 1 or 2 off just to increase the consistency of finding Titan. But that's why I added the four copies of Beast Whisper, as well as the three Cradles to help us find Titan, which is hopefully enough. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.